for you to pastor a church in the Netherlands, you must carry a lot of grace. Amen. You must carry what? To pastor a church in the Netherlands, Holland. You must carry a lot, a lot of grace. And beyond that, to be a regional pastor, that is much, much grace. Praise the Lord. This morning, we have in our midst, one of us is a pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus House for All Nations in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. He's also our coordinator in the Netherlands that coordinates redeemed programs in the Netherlands. Please, with all joy, Let's welcome our brother, our pastor, Pastor Ibrahim Abashi. Let's be on our feet to rejoice with him as he comes forward. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a wave of offering. Are you here this morning expectant? Believing God to speak to you. Come on, wave to the Lord. Thank God that you are alive. Thank God you're standing on your feet, not with the crutches. <clears throat> Come on, thank God that you are alive. God is not true with you. And this morning declare that I will live, I will not die. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The word of the Lord concerning me shall come to pass. And every word I'm holding on to, God is able to bring it to pass. I know my God is a performer. He is faithful, unfailing, ever true. I come before the almighty God this morning. The one that gives me hope. The one that sustains me. I will not leave here disappointed. I am keeping my appointment. My time for glory has come. I will see his glory. In the name of Jesus. Come and give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. And Father, we thank you this morning because you are a good God. The people have gathered not to meet man, but to meet you. And so, Lord, please, whatever you would do today, remember everyone. I know some came prepared, some came praying, some came here saying, God, today, remember me for good. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that no one will live here disappointed. Amen. So, Lord, speak through me this morning. I empty myself and I ask that you use me as an oracle to bring a word in due season. To encourage someone. To challenge someone. To provoke someone. To rebuke someone. To encourage someone. In the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, Lord, let your name and your name alone be glorified. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say better, amen. 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 I don't know how many of you know this song. It says, great things he has done. Greater things for those believing. He will do unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great things he has done. Oh, great things, great things he has done. Great things he will do unto the Lord. He that knows me, great things he has done. One more time, great things he has done. You may be seated in God's presence. God bless you. 
Thank you, church. And I want to thank Pastor Austin Okawe in absentia for the privilege to stand before you this morning to minister the word. I'm not totally a stranger. I used to be right across uh, the other side of the divide on the satellite side. For many years, I pastored the Rock of Ages. I was a pioneer pastor there. And uh, I was there till 2000 when the Lord now posted me to the Netherlands. And I've been in the Netherlands ever then, and I thank God for what God has been doing. So I am uh, one of you, and uh, I just feel like I'm coming back to base. Praise God. And I want to thank God for what God is doing in your midst here. I thank God for the work that has made progress. And I want to believe God that God will do even greater things. How many of us are believing God to do greater things? Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to come with me quickly to the Bible. I want to read from Psalms 84. Psalms 84. Psalms 84. I'll be sharing with you this morning on conditions for the manifestation of the glory of God. Uh, Psalms 84. And I begin to read from verse 11. You know, it says, For the Lord God is our son and our shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who do, who walk uprightly. Another translation says, from those who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold. I want to thank God for what God has done for us in Nigeria. I want to thank God for how God, you know, delivered us from all the doomsday you know, predictions and prophecies. Many people had anticipated that there will be calamity, there will be war. And many people had already prepared for the worst. Now, I pray God will change the minds of all those who are preparing for the worst. I pray God will begin to help you to prepare for the best. Amen. Tell somebody, don't prepare for the worst. Prepare for the best. And I thank God also that this month in this church, I understand that the word of the Lord to the church is that this is the month of Jubilee. Am I right? Now, how many of you know it is so important every month to receive a word from the man of God and to hold on to that word? David said in Psalms 119 verse 49, he said, remember thy word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Remember thy word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. And I believe that a word from God makes a difference in a man's life. Every month, receive a word from God and hold on to that word and God will bring a performance of it. When the angel spoke to Mary and said, you know, this was the word of the Lord, she was going to conceive. She said, you know, at the end of the day, she said, be it unto me according to your word. And the Bible says there shall be a performance of that which God has spoken unto those who believe. And I want to believe God that before this month is over, I know that this is the last day. Somebody here, because you believe, you will jubilate. Yeah. <laughs> because behind jubilee is jubilation. And I want to believe God. And I prophesy, before this month is over, even if it's only a few hours left, before this month is over, the reason for your jubilation will be triggered. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. As many as believe God's word, has hold on to God's word. I said, you know, the Bible says, believe the Lord thy God, thou will be established. Believe his prophet and thou shall prosper. That's why when you come to church, regardless of who is standing on the pulpit, your business is to tell God before you leave home, I am coming again into the sanctuary. Lord God Almighty, send a word. I'm a believer. I will hold on to your word. And let there be a performance of your word. Your job is to come, receive the word, as long as it is a word that is not contradicted by the word of God. When you hold on to the word, you believe the word, you act on the word. It is God that watches his word to perform. And for every believer, there shall not be a disappointment. Yeah. And I pray for all those who have by faith held on to God's word, that God will reward your faith. Yeah. You will not be disappointed. 
Everyone believing God for Jubilee, I prophesy to you this morning, before that month is over, whatever it is that will cause for your jubilation to be triggered, may it be released right now. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has held back your jubilation, I command that they be held back forthwith in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, Jubilee, there's something about Jubilee. Jubilee, number one thing is release. Every time they talk of Jubilee, there's a release. There's a release. On the 50th year, they say there will be a release of the captives, of the slaves, of all those who are in one form of chain and bondage. I pray for someone here. I pray for someone here. This is not my message. But I pray for someone here. I want to let the Holy Spirit take control. I pray for someone here. Everything holding you back. Everything that has placed you in chain. Everything that has hindered you to be able to dance before God. Everything that makes you to be smiling on the outside. But you are crying on the inside. I pray for somebody here. The God that says set the captives free. The God that says open the door of the prison. I prophesy into your life. I command a release and I ask from this day, let there be a release in the name of Jesus. May your joy break forth. May your rejoicing begin. May your captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus. Anyone here under a spell Anyone here that has been bound, anyone here that has been held back, I decree by the power of God that every yoke, every bondage operating over your life, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. The invincible barriers that have kept you stagnant so that your progress is not evident. And you cannot move forward. And yet there is an earnest desire for change. I decree this morning by the unction of the almighty God. That every invincible forces are red against you. Hindering your movement. Hindering your progress. I command by the fire of God. Let them be scattered. I decree an open door. To move forward, to move forward, to make progress, to break stagnancy in the name of Jesus. You shall jubilate. Another thing about jubilee is that in the year of jubilee, in the time and the season of jubilee, there is what they call a return. In the time that Moses, you know, under the leading of God, you know, proclaim and declare the time of season, the, 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 you know, the jubilee. It was meant to be such that whatever it was that was lost was returned and restored. Even lands that were sold were returned to the owners. Because in the 50 year, it was expected that whatever was bought would be returned back. And that's why even when people lose things, God calls in a time of jubilee that there is a restoration. Now let me tell you why I'm talking about conditions for glory this morning. Because I believe for someone that is now living, they say, you know, they, you know in, 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 in past glory, that God will bring about a restoration of glory. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Maybe you don't understand what we mean when we talk about the restoration of glory. There are people, when they speak about them, they speak in the past tense. He used to be. She used to be. Oh, if you knew this man before, if you know what you could do. Now, may God change that story. Because God is the same yesterday, 
today and forevermore. What he did yesterday, he is doing today, he will do tomorrow. The Bible says great things he has done, greater things he will do. God is the God of increase, not the God of decrease. As a man walks with God, as a man keeps steps with God, as the glory of God surrounds your life, there is progress, evident, things seen. And that's why for those who are now in the past, I see God turning things around. And as in line with the word that God has given you in the house this month, I speak to somebody here. There shall be a return. Tell, look at someone and tell somebody there will be a return. A return of what? A return of glory. Tell somebody glory. Glory. There shall be a return of glory. Let me, if you are in the spirit and you sense and understand the signs of the times, you can begin to peek from the, you know, from the, from the realm of the spirit what God is doing. And I want to dare tell you that even concerning our nation, Nigeria, God is restoring glory. I'm not a politician. I know some of us may have voted on different sides. But whatever happens, God allows things to happen. And I believe that in this season, there is certainly where we were that we need not not to be. And God wants to move us somewhere. And I know the enemy has been contending. And he will continue to contend. But guess what? When God says it's time, God will do everything to ensure what he wants to do will work. But it will require our cooperation. Am I speaking to someone? It will require what? Our cooperation. When God gives a word, you know, God watches his word to perform. He has the part he will play. We have the part that we will play. He has the part to play and we have our part to play. The Bible says that, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Guess what? It is God's will that none should perish, but people perish. Is it because God cannot stop anyone from perishing? No, he can. But man has his part. God has his part. Man has his part. God has his part. When man meets his part, God is ever faithful. He will do his part. There are times God gives a word. There's a prophetic word that goes out. And people don't see a performance. Not because God does not watch his word to perform. Or because God is not able to do what he says he will do. Often there is a part that we play. And there is a part that God will play. Praise God. There is an outside of responsibility. And when we take on the responsibility... God will is faithful, is faithful to do what he says he will do. Praise God. How many of us here are believing God for the return of glory? You will not be addressed in the past. You will be addressed in the present. In the time of Jubilee, there is a return. And there is the return is the return of glory. I prophesy into somebody's life here. I see God restoring you. I see God restoring you. The way God restored Wari back to power, against all odds, God will restore you. You see, in the time of Jubilee, in the, it's a time of favor. Even the things that work against you will work for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some people cannot understand how come some things happen. But when God's time is, and God is said to do, and you walk in within step with God, things will happen. And I believe God that things will happen for you. In the name of Jesus. Let's come back to our text. The Bible says here, the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will do what? He will give grace. And the Lord will give what? Glory. And no good thing. Say with me, no good thing. Come on, say it. Say it again. No good thing will he withhold from them that do what? 
that do what? Walk uprightly. Now, I want us to just quickly go in and break these things down and I'll be out of the way. Praise God. The first thing I want you to know is that in this season, God wants to restore glory. Not only to Nigeria, but also to the people. That's why there is a change that's coming. I'm not saying that just the change of government brings change. No. It is good that there's a change of government. But more than just a mere change of government, the question to ask is what will change? I am sure you and I, regardless of who we voted for, our desire is not just about voting just any person. Our desire lies more with the fact that we want to see things change. Am I right? We want to see our lives get better. We want to see God's glory radiate in our life. Am I right? Praise God. And that's why even at this time of change, the question is what change? What change? What are we desiring to see? God wants to reveal his glory. Now, why do we talk about glory? The opposite of glory is shame and reproach. That everything that causes for shame, anything that is a reproach, how can they say a country is a rich country and the majority of the people are poor? That is a disgrace. Am I right? You can understand where the, people, the country is poor. But a country that is rich and the people are poor, is that not a reproach? That is a reproach. How can it be said? A country that knows God, full of dynamic ministries, and then they will still say that when you go there, there is so much corruption. There is so much things evil that is going on. Something is wrong somewhere. Praise God. If you come to church every day, you are, you know, tongue blasting, Bible quoting Christian, and people see your life, it's not moving in the way it should move. That is also a reproach. Does sickness and disease bring glory to God? Does poverty bring glory to God? Does failure bring glory to God? Now, there are clear things we see that is not. The will of God. And that's why when God is said to do what he wants to do, we need to connect. And we need to make ourselves available because God desires to do great things. Praise God. How many of us want to connect with what God is doing? We have a responsibility to continue to pray for the leaders that are now in government so that they will keep focus and they will not derail. So that every forces from the pits of hell that consistently wants to walk against God's purpose and counsel will be defeated in the name of Jesus. That's why prayers must continue for them. It is not enough to use the vote. After the vote, we need to pray. And not only pray, we have our part to play. Praise God. Now what is it our part to play? We want to see the glory of God. There are conditions. We want to see the glory of God, their conditions for our leaders and for ourselves. How many of us truly desire to see change in this country? Now the question I'm going to ask you will surprise you. How many of you are ready to change? <laughs> you know, most times we are waiting for people to change and the real issue, it might just be that we are the ones that need to change. Praise God. To change so that our change will come. Now, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I believe to change and to see change in our country, the first thing we need is grace. What has happened so far is just the grace of God. Two things tie grace together. Two things is what holds grace. Number one is mercy. Praise God. Number one is what? Now, whether you like it or not, there are some things that it will only take the mercy of God 
for some things to happen. And I pray and, and I hope that God will be merciful to somebody here. Because when you look at our lives, there are some things that we ourselves have done against ourselves that should make things not to happen. And that's why every sincere person, when we come before God, we must consistently plead for God's mercy. Praise God. A lot of evil has gone on in this land. And that until we plead for God's mercy, and God in his compassion is moved, today God will be merciful to someone. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus, when he heard Jesus was passing, what did he do? He cried out. He said, have mercy upon me. And I want to believe God that God will have mercy on someone. The second thing that grace does, because where there's mercy, you see, mercy tempers judgment. Mercy tempers judgment. You deserve certain punishment that you don't get because of mercy. The second thing about grace is that it confers favor. There are many things that we may never be qualified for. Only favor will qualify us. There are some hard desires and longing that people have. They, on their own, they can never qualify for it. It will only take favor to qualify you. I recall the story of a sister. Very beautiful sister. Pretty sister. Good job. Very fervent in the things of God. And year in, year out, nobody came to propose to her to marry her. And meanwhile, the other sisters in the church were getting married. And after a little while, due to the longing that was not fulfilled, she became less fervent. She stopped fellowship and just slipped out of church. And because she used to be very active, the pastor noticed, sent for her. And after a while, she showed up. And he said, sister, what's going on? Why are you no more, you know, fervent? Why are you no more coming to fellowship? He said, what did I do, God? I beg, leave me alone. Ah, what did you do, God? What's the problem? She said, Pastor, you don't, can't you, don't you understand? In this church, how many sisters are as pretty as I am? How many are as qualified as I am? How many of them have better jobs than I am? And yet, all the ugly sisters are getting married. And I have not been able to get married. Ah, but thank God, the pastor was a wise pastor. He said, now I know the reason why you never got married. He said, you think because of your qualification, you are qualified to get married. But what you fail to understand is that your qualification disqualifies you. If you must get married, it will take the grace of God. So it is God's grace that makes the difference. Sometimes there are more educated people, better candidates that fail, that lose election. More educated people. The Bible says the battle, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. He said bread is not to the wise. No riches to men of understanding. But there's something called time and chance. And it's all about the favor of God. Because when God says to favor you, nobody can disfavor you. Somebody lift up your hand and say, Father, Father. More, grace. more grace. More grace. More grace. To serve you. Amen. Amen. It will take the grace of God. So I congratulate somebody that has been disqualified because of his qualification. You may be disqualified because of your qualification, but if this morning by grace you receive God's favor, I see the favor lifting you beyond your qualification. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. praise the Lord. That shame will be terminated. Amen. That disgrace will be brought to an end. Amen. Because when grace steps in, disgrace goes away. Now, grace is important because it is through grace that a man will access glory. You see, grace lifts you up and positions you for glory. That's why it is God that gives grace and then gives glory. Glory is honor. Am I speaking to someone? When God is said to honor you. Ah, if you know what honor can do. 
Mordecai, if you read in the book of Esther, was a man who had done a good thing. He discovered a coup plot, informed the king. And you would think that this is a man that should have been rewarded. And guess what? He was forgotten. And not only that, the man that now took the credit and enjoyed the blessing was not content to now even leave it there. He decided that he would even do more worse thing to Mordecai. He was not only said to destroy him, but not only his family, but his entire race. And it was like, where is God? And for some years, this carried on. And Haman was getting stronger and stronger and more influential. And Mordecai was forgetting and was by the side. And as his plot to eliminate them was thickening, as sometimes people are want to wonder, where is God? But God was watching. Now listen, when the time of glory comes, ah, because grace keeps you. And God wants to then honor. <laughs> if you all know the story, because I don't have the time to go into all of that, the Bible tells us that the same Haman, because of the chain of event that happened, was the one who used his own mouth to pronounce what should be done for Mordecai. He did not only pronounce it, the king now got this same enemy to go and carry out the instruction. When the time of honor comes, because grace keeps a person, God causes glory to come forth. Am I speaking to someone? And I'm believing in this season, honor is coming to someone. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Okay, quickly, let me know. But what is your part and what must you do? The Lord God is a son and shield. He gives grace. He gives glory. Now listen. No good thing will he withhold. So if you are desirous of any good thing, God will not withhold it. No good thing will he withhold from them that do what? That walk uprightly. Uprightly. So there is a qualification. Many times people don't look at the qualification. What the, what the, many times people don't look at the condition. And we need to begin to look at this thing. I believe we are coming in a season in our country where honor will begin to come. Where grace will begin to speak in the name of Jesus. We've lived in a season where people think it's only man, no man. There comes a time, I'm telling you, you will just be picked out. I am saying things that will come to pass. Whether you say amen or not, I'm declaring and saying things in the name of Jesus. He says, no good thing will be, will be, will be will, will, you know, no good thing will he be told from them that walk uprightly. I want you to come with me to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. Proverbs 3, verse 35. Proverbs 3, verse 35. I want you to see the word of the Lord there. What does he say? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 35. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise, the wise, they shall inherit what? But what will be the promotion of fools? Shame, shame, shame shall be the promotion of fools. But the wise shall inherit glory. Now what is it? Basically, that defines or makes a man wise. Who is that wise man? We know the Bible makes it abundantly clear that it will take the upright, the upright, to receive the grace and the glory of God. Now, who is this wise person? Number Psalms, Proverbs 1, verse 7. I want you to come there. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is what? 
Please help me. The fear of the Lord is what? But fools despise. Any man here who is set and ready to encounter and enjoy, you know, uncommon and unusual grace that brings a man into the place of glory. I want to encourage you that if you truly in this season, in this new Nigeria, in the change that we're expecting, Brethren, it's not enough to come to church. Brethren, it's not enough to, you know, to be singing and dancing here every day. We need to begin as a people to imbibe the fear of God. Am I speaking to someone? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is what is the beginning of wisdom. And the Proverbs 3 verse 35 tells us that the wise shall inherit glory. The wise shall inherit. It's not enough to be in church but not to fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalms 19 verse 9 says the fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord is enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us also in Psalms, in Psalms 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his what? His covenant. Praise God. Job 28 verse 28. I just want to give you a few scriptures that just addresses the fear of God. So you can keep them. I want to challenge us in this season, brethren, as you prepare for change, your own change, there are some things we should pay attention to. Job 28 verse 28, and unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Praise God. The fear of the Lord is what? Wisdom. And to depart from evil is what? Understanding. Let's look at a few more scriptures. Psalm 33 verse 18. Psalm 33 verse 18. What does the scripture there say? Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. I pray when you live here today, before you make that next move, something will say, fear God. Fear God. Listen, you may fear no man. You may fear no, 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 no body. But at least fear God. You know the reason why the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? It's because there are many people who claim to know God, but they don't fear God. Because if you fear God, there are some things that we do that we will not do. And God has been merciful. That's why some of us that, you know, many of us that live our life without the fear of God, we just escape and go scot-free. But mercy has its limits. Praise God. I believe in this season of change, judgment will also be speaking, even as mercy is released. I'm preparing the church for change. Praise God. Please look at somebody and tell him, fear God. I didn't say fear man, I said fear God. Fear God. Listen, Psalm 34 verse 7, more scriptures. You know, we just look at a few things. Psalm 34 verse 7. The Bible says, The angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him. And does what? The angel of the Lord does what? And come camp around them that fear him, that he may do what? That he may deliver them. Look at someone and say, Fear God, and he will deliver you. Praise the Lord. Now, what does it mean to fear God? Proverbs 8 13. Proverbs 8 13. Proverbs 8.13. 
The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do away with pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Praise God. The fear of the Lord is to do what? To hate evil. Anything that's evil, we must not join company with those who do evil and still call ourselves believers. We must not even keep company with those who do evil. Our choice is that anything that will be evil, we should stay away from it. Brethren, it will pay. It will pay. It will pay in the name of Jesus. I see the place is getting too quiet. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 26 and 27. Let's read that quickly. Proverbs 14. 26 and 27. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Ah, I see God restoring somebody's confidence. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Go on to verse 27. Eh? The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. Let's move on to Proverbs 15 verse 16. I want us to look at that. I just want to leave you with some scriptures so you can meditate on it. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. There are people who by evil have gathered wealth. They come for prayers every time. Because they can't sleep. But they gathered by evil. And trouble is with the wealth. They eat but they are getting lean. And they don't have joy in their abundance. Until there is a restitution. That's why the scripture is saying... Better is little with the fear of the Lord. Guess what? Than great treasure with troubles that will never go. Last scripture and I move on. Verse 33. Go on to verse 33. Let's look at what does verse 33 say? Proverbs 15, 33. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor, you can change it and say before glory is what? Is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Any man who fears God that's why the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The grace that will qualify a man for glory comes in the place of being humble before God. I'll leave you with one more thing. You know, part of the conditions for the glory of God. You know, it's part of being wise. Exodus 15 verse 11. Second, after the fear of God is holiness. Holiness. We need to talk about holiness in the church of God. These days, people don't like sermons on holiness. They like to come to a place where they will only dance and be entertained. They laugh. And it's nice for there to be laughter, singing and dancing, but we need to say some things that are very critical. People have made it to look like if you are holy, you will get poor. Or holy people are poor people. But the God that we serve is a holy God. The Bible says, pursue peace with all men and, 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 and holiness without which no man will see God. Why? Because he says, be holy for I the Lord thy God, I am what? Holy. Now this holy God introduces himself as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And guess what? These people he introduced are not poor people. 
Abraham was rich. He even had a 350 men army, private army. Isaac was rich. Jacob was rich. Very, as the Bible says, you know, in case of Isaac, he was exceedingly rich. So, they were not poor people. To make it look as if though, poverty goes with holiness. And prosperity goes with sin. But many have come to make holiness look as if though it is something that if you are holy, your life will be condemned to poverty and lack. That is one of the lies from the pits of hell. In fact, it takes holiness to have real prosperity. Without holiness, any prosperity is fake. So, the Bible tells us if you want to see God in his glory, Miriam sang that song, Exodus 15, 11. He's glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. Always God is glorious in holiness. And if you want to see him in a fearful way, then praise him. But if you want to see him in a glorious way, then you have to be holy. Without holiness, you cannot see God's glory. So you find out that holiness is very essential for glory to manifest. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20. It says the soul that sinned, what will happen? And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 verse 23. You know that all have seen and what? And have come short of what? So sin cuts you from God's glory. Anybody who wants to get ready for shame and disgrace, continue with sin. Because sin is the opposite of holiness. A sinful person cannot be a holy person. And a holy person cannot be a sinful person. Because the two, they are antithetical. They don't go together. Am I speaking to someone? Now, what's all this talk of holiness? Because I don't like leaving people wondering. It's not looking pious. And looking holier than thou. Or standing out there. And you know. Close, you know someone will co cover their face all over to the floor. But the evil that is inside them. Is greater than anything. It is simply living one's life in obedience to God. Living a life of obedience unto God. Is simply holiness. Are you with me? If whatever God says. That's what I will do. If you are sitting here, you're not paying your tithe, you are committing sin. No matter how much you cover it, how much you look, you know, how pious you may look, that doesn't help you. Praise God. I need to begin to round up. This morning, I just wanted to share with you some few things. I may not be able to say too much, but even if you remember just these two things, and commit in this season of change, that I will commit to these two things. I want to fear God more. Are you with me? I may not fear man, but I'll fear God. Grace will come to you. Before you know it, glory will envelop you. You don't need too much prayers and too much magic. There is a part that we must do. The part of obedience. The part of obedience that will bring honor. See does three things in three dimensions. Number one, sin is deceptive. It makes you have the impression that, you know, everything is okay. Because sin will tell you no. And that's why it's very deceitful. There's nothing wrong. Just cheat. There's nothing wrong. Everybody's doing it. If you can't beat them, join, it, join them. You are in a system, they say, look, if you don't follow what is going on, everything, just do what everybody is doing. No. You're going to change. You're going to be holy. And you will be the one that will be next celebrated. <laughs> Let's rise up on our feet. There's no time. <laughs> We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord, help me. I am ready 
for the manifestation of your glory in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to the Lord this evening. Lord, help me. Help me. I desire to see the manifestation of your glory in my life. The Bible says that the wise shall inherit glory. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. I don't want shame to follow me in this season. I want your glory to be revealed in my life. Your grace to abound towards me. Lord, let me begin to be a man that will fear you. A man that will honor you. A man, oh God, that will walk in obedience to you. I don't just want to be a hearer. I want to be a doer of the word. I want to live a life that will please you. That will honor you. A life that will celebrate you. Oh God, help me. Let this be my season of change. As I move forward in my walk with you. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to God. Lika brokono moshta kaba makaba ba brokono e kase kelege brokono monoshta kuraba katasuka ruba kuna mana shte kelende. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And before I take my seat, while we are still praying, you may be here this morning. You have not truly given your life to God. You don't really fear God. You're playing games with God. And because God has been merciful, you think that it will continue forever. In a season of change, God will be visiting iniquities. Because certain things are going to be set right. In this period, if you sense what's going on, change is coming. And in a season of change, God gives people a chance to respond and make amends. You may be here this morning. You've been playing church. You've been playing games. You're sleeping and sliding and sin. And everything looks okay. But I warn you, it's not going to continue like that. This is a good opportunity to make peace with God. Wherever you are in the hall, all eyes closed. Pray for yourself. If you're here, you want to give your life to Jesus, please, I'd like you to come out quickly, quickly. Anyone here? Quickly, quickly. I just... My time is up already. I just have barely a few minutes left. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So that you will not suffer shame. So that disgrace will not follow your dog your path. And you want to see God's hands come upon you. I just have one minute left. If you're here in the auditorium, wherever you are, please, I'd like you to run out quickly. I want to pray with you. God wants to set you up. His grace will come upon you. And his glory will come upon your life. Any other person? I'm waiting for you. Rebakosho koto. Lege brokono mono shtakuta kapa. E kasula lega brokono mono shtakaba. Banka saka rabayana mana. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, church, I'd like you to stretch your hands. Let's pray for these ones. Let's pray for them. I want you, those of you that are out here in front of me, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, I come to you. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need help. I need help. This morning, wash me with your blood and cleanse me from all my sins. Come into my life and take control. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I know you have done it. I give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, I'd like you to go to my sister here. Look at her right behind. Oh, oh God bless you. I don't know what you do. Praise God. Well, we need to clap for this church. They, 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 they. 
Each one is for you. This is the. This is the and and for you. What about the young lady? Only four. They will get your own for you. Eh? Praise God. Let's put our hands. Let's appreciate the Lord for their life. I'd like you to go with my sister here. She will attend to you. God bless you. You may be seated in God's presence. God bless you all.